This is a softbox. This is actually a 16 cm parabolic softbox by Natlay with attached a Forza 150. And then we're gonna have also the Forza 60 with the FL11, which is a Fresnel lens that allows to concentrate the light. And I wanna show you the difference uh, from moving actually the softbox closer or further away from having one layer of diffusion, two layer of diffusion, and several types of diffusions. Now I set up a camera. This is the Sony Alpha 6400, which is actually linked with my mobile phone so that you'll be able to see with the app exactly what kind of settings we're using. But in this video, the most important part is actually understanding how the light behaves when we move it closer, when we move it further away, and when we change layers of diffusion. Now, let's start with a very basic example. So we're gonna take a photo just with a softbox and one with the harsh light and see the difference of the two. Let's take a normal Rembrandt light photo that means having on the opposite cheek comparing to where the source light comes from, a triangle. So right here, we're just gonna try to have a triangle, classic light, there you go. And boom, now let me switch from a softbox to actually having the Fresnel light, the Forza 6TB with a very strong source of light. All right, cool, now we have a Fresnel that is pointing towards us. This is very harsh and also the shadows in our face are very harsh. And as you can see also from the background, we have a very strong and neat shadow. Now let's take a photo together. There you go, and when we compare with the previous one, you see, you notice the massive difference because the light is all concentrated and it's much harsher on my face than compared to when we had the softbox. But now let's actually understand and see what happens when we remove the Fresnel from the light and we're just gonna use the normal LED light that comes from the Forza 60B. There you go, now I've removed the Fresnel on top of it and we have only the light, which is like this one. There you go, as you can see, that's the light. And the light, because it's not concentrated anymore as much as before with the Fresnel, it is illuminating more side of the room and therefore we need to adjust the camera setting. We're just gonna increase the ISO, there you go. Here we can keep it 160 and then we're gonna snap a photo. All right, there you go. And now you can see the difference between the previous photo with the Fresnel and this one actually without the Fresnel. So they're a little bit different. But now I wanna show you a third example just using this sort of lighting, but having some sort of diffusion. To try this example, we can use, for example, a bed sheet, or we can use a level of diffuser from the softbox that we have. Because inside the softbox that we tried before, we actually have two levels for diffusion, and I'm gonna show you that later. But let me bring this one. So there you go, this is the front part of the softbox. Now what I wanna do is that I wanna hold it in front of the light if I can, and then see the difference of the photo that we have. So just holding in front of the light, I need to adjust the camera settings. I need to bump up the ISO quite a lot. There you go, and now we're gonna snap a photo. Cool, and this is the photo that we got. This is unedited, and if you compare it with the Fresnel, without the Fresnel, L without the Fresnel, but a level of diffusion, then you can see that there is a massive difference how harsh and how soft the light is with or without the diffusion. Obviously, we had to bump up the ISO when we had the diffuser in front of us because as the name suggests, this diffused the light. So the light was spilling a little bit around and was being diffused, but that level, and therefore it was not as strong, it was not as powerful as without the level of uh, diffusion. Now, let me bring back the softbox and I wanna show you the difference by having a softbox that is very close to you or that is very far from you. Cool, now I have the softbox basically 30 cm from my face and it doesn't really matter if it's in the frame because I just wanna show you the effect that you have in your face when it's very close or when it's very far. So even if it's a frame, it doesn't really matter for now. I'm just gonna adjust the setting of the camera. So I'm gonna bring the ISO at minimum 100 and then I'm gonna move the shutter speed maybe at one 60, there you go. So now we snap a photo. 
And now that we got the photo with the softbox that is extremely close, I'm gonna move this softbox much further away, let's say maybe two meters further away and see what is the difference. Cool, now I'm adjusting the settings so that we are well lit. And in this case, I actually put it at 100% strength the exposure of the light, one, the non light 150, whereas before it was around 55%. So obviously now it's much stronger because it's much further away and we need more light, but the concept is different. Let me just try to take a photo right now and then I'm gonna explain it to you. All right, now you see the before when it was extremely close and the after. Can you see any difference? Well, the photos are completely different, especially because of the shadows. Whenever we have the softbox extremely close to our face, the shadows will be much, much softer. That's why I push every single time to tell you in my Instagram Reels or on YouTube that you need to have the source of light as close as possible to yourself because when you have that smooth light, it just looks great. It looks extremely professional. So look at the difference from the before that all the shadows are extremely soft and you don't see any harsh line and the after where the softbox where it is now is very far from me. It's like two meters away and you see that shadow on the nose. So there you go, a huge difference. Now let me explain you one more thing about lighting that is super important apart from this. So now let me just bring the softbox closer. Now what I want to show you is that the number of level of diffusion, it actually matters on how the final photo is going to look like and the distance of the level of diffusion from the source of light actually will change and will influence how the shadow will look like in your portraits or your self-portraits. So, in this case, right now, I have two levels of diffusion. I have this one that you see right here, and then also I have another one inside, which is actually just made of baking paper. Now, the reason why I use baking paper is because I forgot the inner level of diffusion, but this one works amazingly. Fun fact, uh, once when I came to London, I left all the diffusers at home in Italy, and uh, I was just using baking paper on top of the light right here, and it was working amazingly. So this is just to demonstrate you that even just with baking paper, if you have any sort of auto lighting, then you can create some sort of level of diffusion that will look amazing in your portrait. So right now there are two, and let's take a photo when there are two. Cool. Now what I wanna do, I'm just gonna remove the first one. Okay, now the light is very bright because we are actually removing one level. There you go. So we're just gonna leave this one right here. So right now what we have is simply the baking paper very close to the source of the light. And then I actually need to increase the shutter speed here otherwise it's too bright. There you go. And we're gonna snap a photo. All right, and there you go, you see the difference. We still have one level of diffusion and you can see that even here when we analyze the shape of the shadow and the nose, then it's different. So when we have two levels of diffusion, the light is more diffused. So it's double diffused, let's say, even though it's not correct to say double. But then let me show you one last example whenever we actually remove the first level of diffusion. So we're gonna remove the inner layer with the baking paper that we have right here and we're just gonna put back the only one but on the edge of the softbox so on the external part let's say and not internally like it was before the baking paper there you go now let's adjust a bit the settings so we're gonna come back with the shutter speed okay that's fine we snap a photo And there you go, now you can see the difference between the three type of photos. The one with two levels, the second one with just one layer very close to the source and the third one with just one layer but a little bit further away. So while between the first one and the last example the difference is not massive, we can see that 
and the first example is slightly slightly softer the type of light also because we use just some sort of baking paper if you had like a different another different diffuser another professional diffuser that would make a difference and would also make a huge difference if we had if we had another further away diffuser from the source of light so the concept is that you need to have a source of light and then as far as possible you need to have one level of diffuser or maybe multiple ones and then your face has to be as close as possible to the last layer of diffusion in that case you're gonna have the softest light possible and you can try to do different trials at your home as well and also if you're ready and you want to try to experiment with the sort of lighting I'm gonna leave a video right here where I talk about 10 different single light setup for portraits I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to leave it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the notification bell thank you very much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one ciao